Jamuna Tira Panachari Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Upijana Balabha Giri Vardhani Upijana Balabha Giri Vardhani Shishodanandana Brajajana Ranjana Shodanandana Brajajana Ranjana Jamuna Tira Banachari Jamuna Tira Banachari Radha Madhava Kunjabi
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Sisirad Hamarava Kijari Srila Prabhupada Kijari Hare 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 Now we have a little light in the back now I need to turn this light on. Okay. Ma Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashthaya Bhutale Shrimate Bhakti Vedanta Sham Nini Tinamane Namaste Sharashati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirise Sasanyavari Paschatya Desatarine So we have Maybe four pages to read about Yoga Maya. Most, I believe, are Leela. We'll see how the discussion goes. I just have to bring it up. And then... Go to where we left off, which may or may not be the right place. My computer will take me to where we left off. And it's taking me to the end of the document. So, I don't think we finished. To my remembrance, we didn't finish. Did we? Did I say we finished the document? I have the... Um, hmm. This document, we have a problem... It's supposed to be a 95-page document, and this document is telling me it's only 43 pages. Mm. So, life is strange. Hold on. I don't know what happened. Let's try it again. Okay, now got the right document. Okay. So, um, now I need help. Nadia, do you remember where we left off? Are you here? Can you give me the page number? I am now going to search to see. Um, I'm in the chat. We didn't finish reading. Okay. So, Nadia, can you tell me the page number we left off on? I remember something like having about four pages left. Do you realize we've read 103 pages on this topic? We've quite extensively covered it. And our only prayer is that Yoga Maya may influence our life more. I, um, we were talking about Krishna's flute, correct? Or were we? Um, difficult for me to remember because I've read this all before. You should start with the words, one may then question how real spiritual symptoms um, 
page number? Any idea? I can search it. On a question. No matches. <laughs> that didn't help. I need a page number. Yeah, I, I don't have that. Strange. She has a document I don't have. One may then, oh, minor details. Okay, I should be able to get it. One may then, one result. Okay, we're good. <clears throat> we don't have much to read then. Right, we're on page 102 of a 103-page document. So if we finish, then we will begin talking about Gaur Leela. I want to read the... Um, uh, uh, okay, well, let's start reading. So this is a separate thought. Uh, from what we were reading last time, we were reading about the glories of Krishna's flute. And how the flute had different effects on different devotees. Let me read a, a few paragraphs from the past, Nadia. I just want to make sure this is where we left off. Actually, I want to read the whole thing again. Nadi, let's start on, on page 101. The last question was put by a Grihasta disciple. Let's start there. I just want to remind ourselves, sorry for this delay, it's already 20 minutes. And I don't know how that rap came up. I was just putting on a It was somehow or other I got an advertisement that came through SoundCloud while I was just putting up a tambora. Okay. The last question was put by a Grihasta disciple who had dedicated everything to the service of his guru and was inclined to the Baba of a Gopa. Gurudev, having come to the platform of loving service, and then, having quit this body, how long will it take to receive that spiritual body which is fit for achieving perfection? Dear boy, have no fear. Smile, Gurudev, lovingly. Remember how Sri Nardaji was awarded his spiritual body without delay? In that way, without a moment's notice, the Lord will arrange for your divine form. Offer his blessings to his dear disciples. Offering, excuse me. Offering his blessings to his dear disciples, Gurudev said... O oh, greatly eager Anuragi devotees, don't be afraid, be at ease, all auspiciousness for you. Well, that's good news. There's no waiting in line. You just go direct. And how long does it take? Not long. Kind of like immediate. Maybe even faster than immediately. Hmm. You know, a devotee leaves their body and we're all lamenting and they're in Krishna Leela. They've just taken birth in Krishna Leela. Nothing to lament. Or they've taken birth in the womb of a devotee to perfect their Krishna consciousness. So it's all good. Those great devotees practiced bhava bhakti to attain prema and day by day their greed for the association of the Lord increased until separation from him became intolerable. I'm talking about, I think here, mentioning the gopis who couldn't go to the Rasa Leela. As foretold by Gurudev, their aspiration for prema could not be fulfilled as their bodies were unsuited to accommodate the spiritual force of their stayibab. Stayibab means their relationship, but um, it also in this context can mean their emotion. Also concerned for the welfare of his devotees, Sri Krishna directed Yogamaya to transfer them from that world and cause their appearance on this planet while he exhibited his pastimes in Vrindavan. So that we discussed that is the attainment of bhava in a material body. The material body cannot attain prema. It will explode. 
And generally, prema is attained in Krishna Lila. So we go to where Krishna is performing his Lila, and we partake. And so this is how it happens. Taking birth in the womb of a gopika, those devotees attain spiritual bodies in which they gain the company of the Nitya Siddha associates and saw some of Sri Krishna's pastimes. Yes, last night my wife was, she does deity worship on Monday and she makes the garlands. Sunday night, actually, this two days a week. And she was listening to Indra Swami's classes, one of his classes, I don't know if it's a recent class, about the different leelas um, of Krishna. Um, and I was telling her, I was saying, you know, these pastimes don't go on in the spiritual world, what Maharaj was describing, the childhood pastimes. But they don't go on in the spiritual world. And we're, we now get to take part in those leelas. Those, and it's said that Krishna's childhood leelas are obviously the most cute, the most special. And Krishna doesn't grow up in this, in Goloka, only here. Cool, cool. So that's amazing if you think about it. We get to take part in Krishna's leelas that don't even go on in the spiritual world in Boma Vrindavan. Hmm. Taking birth in the womb of a gopika, those devotees attain spiritual bodies in which they gain the company of Nitya Siddha associates and saw some of Sri Krishna's pastimes because practicing devotees, karmis, and perfected devotees all enter this materially manifest Vrindavan. It is experienced simultaneously as Sadaka Bhumi and Siddha Bhumi the land for the practitioners and the perfect alike. Well, some of the practitioners become perfect and some of the perfect beings come down to enact these pastimes. These two classes of gopis are now assembled in different parts of Braja, blissfully discussing the glories of Sri Krishna and his flute. So, when you go to Brajbhumi, Vrindavan here. If you ever wanted good association, well, you can have some really good association. Of like Nitya Siddha Gopis. That's pretty good, right? Nitya Siddha Gopas. And as we know, these Nitya Siddha Gopis, Gopas, they come down in Chaitanya Leela as great devotees. Mm. We were just re hearing last night that when Krishna left uh, this world, Sri Dham, he started crying, and he's been crying for 4,500 years. And then Mahaprabhu came and met him, or Krishna came and met him and said, I'm coming back. I want you to be in my leela. He became Ram Das Abhiram. So after 4,500 years of crying. Yeah. So these um, great devotees, Rupa Manjari, Rupa Goswami, Bilas Manjari, Sanatana Goswami, like that, they, we have their association in their eternal forms. And someday, maybe in their sadhaka forms, if we want to participate in Gauranga Leela. Hmm. We'll continue reading. One may then question how real spiritual symptoms can be discerned as, quote, the perfection of Krishna consciousness. Srila Prabhupada quotes Srila Jiva Goswami from the Priti Sandarbha and explains as follows, quote, sometimes a person thus melts and manifests these transcendental symptoms, yet at the same time is not well behaved in his personal transactions. This indicates that he has not yet reached complete perfection in devotional service. In other words, a devotee who dances in ecstasy, but after dancing and crying, appears to be attracted to material affairs, has not yet reached the perfection of devotional service, which is called ashaya shudhi, or the perfection of existence. One who attains the perfection of existence is completely averse 
to material enjoyment and engrossed in transcendental love of God. It is therefore to be concluded that the ecstatic symptoms of a shaya shuti are visible when a devotee's service has no material cause and is purely spiritual in nature. So then you may wonder, well, is this a show? These ecstatic symptoms? It could be a show. Um, there could be other reasons, but since Mahaprabhu's appearance day is coming, I will cite that reason, that the nature of the process of bhakti, especially the nature of chanting the holy name in Kali Yuga is such, as Prabhupada said, even uh, a dog can chant and feel ecstasy. So that's the kripa of Mahaprabhu. You can feel ecstasy without qualification. So you may feel ecstasy and dance in the kirtan way, way before you're on the stage of Baba, which is why after the kirtan you may exhibit some characteristics of those who aren't Krishna conscious. But it doesn't mean that what you were feeling during the kirtan was not real or artificial. It could be. You could be faking it. It could just be a reflection of another devotee's ecstasy. Uh, be that as it may, you did experience something special. We all know that because we've had that experience. And maybe you have all wondered, how is it that I experience ecstasy and the next moment I experience agony? Because we descend back to the material platform, we're influenced by the modes of nature, and the modes of nature affect us in a way that we act materially. But when we're in the kirtan, we transcend them. We experience spiritual ecstasy. And definitely the kirtan is purifying us. It takes time. But that's part of the mercy of Mahaprabhu, that we get purified by that holy name. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you all know. Well, you all must know that the hour changed. So this formally was 7 o'clock, right? This formally was an hour earlier, so everyone may be showing up. Well, others may show up at, at uh, 9 o'clock, possibly. Anyway. Um, so this is um, this is one point to be noted about Mahaprabhu, uh, sometimes we refer to the holy name that Mahaprabhu is given as Premanam. And the reason is because Mahaprabhu is giving Krishna consciousness in the mood of the residence of Raj. So that's mixed into the holy name that he's giving in Kali Yuga. And so we, when we take that holy name, it has a different effect than the holy names of other Kali Yugas or when the holy name is chanted in other ages. In this age, because Mahaprabhu has come in this specific form to give love of God, then he mixes this in to the holy name, Prema, and the mood of the residence of Braja. And even people who are new to Krishna consciousness experience something special. And I've seen that personally in People who have chanted for the first time will ask, you know, that was like uniquely special. What what's going on here? So even they who are by all intents and purposes are all 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 by all characteristics have no qualification to experience any bliss from a spiritual practice, yet until they become purified, they experience it right away. So that is one aspect of Mahaprabhu's mercy. It so if someone is willing to chant, he'll give Krishna consciousness profoundly right from the beginning if they, if they chant enthusiastically. And anything, they'll get some, they get to enter the level of Nama Bas and and get some reflection of prema, enter their heart. Okay, so we'll continue reading. In other words, while shedding tears may be common to karmis, sadhakas and siddhas in the perfect... Oh, I'll read that again. In other words, while shedding tears may be common to karmis, sadhakas and siddhas 
in the perfectional stage. Crying for Krishna is accompanied by complete detachment from material existence. This is the standard of Krishna consciousness. Such tears of pure love, accompanied by complete detachment from matter, are exhibited by the calves and cows of Raja. Although they are all beyond the pale of maya, their devotion varies by stages. And by the arrangement of yoga maya, they transit from the stage of the perfect to the more perfect and then the most perfect expression of love. One, one thing you'll see that in, in Chaitanya Leela and in Krishna Leela, there is a lot of crying when there's separation. And that's natural. When one is feeling pain, and it's natural, as we've discussed, that the separation between Krishna and his devotees, especially the devotees who are who have love, is unbearably painful. But that pain is actually transformed to unbearable sweetness. But the tears sometimes come from ecstasy, and the tears sometimes come from the pain of separation. But there's there's a lot of crying. Uh, you'll find that in Mahaprabhu, in his, especially in his later Leelas. And sometimes they depict Mahaprabhu doing kirtan with tears in his eyes. You may have seen pictures like that. You can imagine if love is intense, just to think about your lover, you'll cry out of appreciation. Or you'll cry out of separation. So we'll continue reading. Hearing of the love possessed by the cows, gopis, and Mother Jashoda, a desire may arise to achieve similar success in spiritual life. In other words, you hear about Mother Yashoda, you hear about the gopis, the coward boys, or you think, I, I would like to be a mother, or I'd like to be a friend, I'd like to be a gopi. Maybe a cow. In a cow in uh, paternal ras giving milk. A desire. Sometimes we say cows in shanta ras. Sometimes it is said other rases. Anyway, hearing of the love possessed by the go cows, gopis, and Jasoda, a desire may arise to achieve similar success in spiritual life. In its preliminary stage, this aspiration is known as asha bandha the hope to one day develop a comparable mood of devotion by continual devotional service characterized characterized by regular chanting and hearing in the association of advanced devotees this hope becomes very strong and is known as lolyam or greed sri the prabhupada says quote if one is very greedy to enhance his krishna consciousness this is a great boon Tattalolyam ekalam mulam. I think it's Tattalolyam api ekalam mulam. Maybe api is in the last line. Yeah, that's right. Tattalolyam, lolyam means greed. Ekalam mulam, mulam means root, ekalam means one or the only. So the root of bhakti, of achieving Krishna consciousness, is only greed or hankering, the desire to have it. This is the best path available. After intense purification, one's mature aspiration is directed to a specific service in one of the five primary rasas, and that is known as lalasa mayi, or yearning at the stage of liberation. So what is being described here, um, very, very briefly, uh, are two things. We can take it on two levels. One is be, one thing that's being described is the practice of Raga Nuga Bhakti. And Raga Nuga Bhakti is when a devotee becomes attracted to the devotion of a particular resident of Vrindavan and wants to follow in their footsteps and experience, wants to experience what they're experiencing, have the feelings, and that kind of consumes them to the point of lolium, I have to have this. Uh, and generally that's going to come from hearing from advanced devotees, especially devotees who have that greed, 
And it's also going to come, obviously, from the continued practice of devotional service as we become purified. Then our inclinations towards a particular ras and then towards uh, rasa and then towards a particular r- resonant abraj in that particular rasa will develop. And then uh, one becomes absorbed, more absorbed in hearing about that rasa and that person and developing, trying to understand and develop those moods. So that's that's one meaning of lolium. That's the we could say Rupa Goswami's intended meaning, but we can't divorce that entirely from what Prabhupada says. Um, that just in general, if I have a strong desire or greed, greed, greed basically means I have to have it. If I have this desire that I have to become Krishna conscious, then this is my best qualification. Um, so we can take it on both levels. I don't think we should um, not recognize that even before one is um, practicing Raghunuga Bhakti, if we can cultivate the desire, just the general global desire to want to be Krishna conscious before it's specific, and that greed means I have to have it, that becomes one's main qualification. You know, sometimes we think, you know, I was sinful in my past life. Uh, I, it doesn't seem like I did a lot of bhakti. I'm still very conditioned. So what is my hope? I don't feel qualified. And materially, I may not feel like I'm very capable to understand philosophy that well and so forth. If if you want Krishna consciousness, that's the, the biggest qualification. And if you don't want it, that's your biggest disqualification. Even... Even if you have so many good qualifications, but you don't really want it, you don't have the greed, that be, that one disqualification can just ruin it. And even and vice versa, you have really no great qualification, but you have lolium. And so previously, uh, we were reading about what's called asha bandha, bandha <coughs> which Prabhupada translates as hope against hope. Asha means desire. Like uh, the Sri Guru in the prayers that we chant every morning, Sri Guru Charana Padma. The word Asha comes up. My only wish is to have my consciousness purified. And the other verses, I think one other. Uh, anyway, Asha means desire. And Banta means bound. And so Asha Bandha, as Prabhupada translates, hope against hope. Uh, it means a desire that actually can't be bound, like like it should be bound, because I'm not qualified, but I can't bind it, like I can't give up this desire. So there's a prayer that goes along with that, a Rupa Goswami. The Prema, Shavanadi Bhaktir, I forget how it goes. No. He's basically saying, I don't, I don't have love for Krishna. I don't even have a desire for love to do the, I don't even have a desire to do the sadhana that would give me love. Um, I didn't, I'm not as smart. I didn't take birth in a pious family. And he's just going down the list of disqualifications. But then he says, but which seems to be a contradiction, like you have no qualification, but then you say, but I have this irrepressible desire to be Krishna conscious. Like, where did that come from? You have no qualification. Well, it proves that material qualification is not necessary. It never was and it never will be. It's helpful for sure, you know, if you're born in a good family, it's certainly helpful. In and of itself, it's not going to do it. It's not going to do the trick. You need, you actually need this desire. So Rupa Goswami, he says, to illustrate this prayer, illustrates this Asha Bandha principle. He said, I, he goes down his list of disqualifications. And then he says, but my Lord, Mahaprabhu, I, I have this hope that I can be Krishna conscious 
I will achieve prema, which in a sense, you could say, it doesn't make sense. It's like, I have no qualification to get into Harvard or Oxford or MIT, or what's that other one? There's another one in England, Oxford, what's the other one? I forget. Starts with a C, no? I have no qualification to get into this university, but I want to. <laughs> it's like, okay, fine, you know, get the qualification. But here, he's saying, you know, I have no qualification, but I want prema. And then he says, and the reason I have this hope, and I can't give up this hope, so Asha Bandha, I have this hope which cannot be bound. You can't bind this hope. This hope is not bindable. It's, Asha Bandha sounds like a hope that's bound, but he's saying, you can't bind my hope. And why? Because I know you're merciful. And I know by your mercy, it's going to be possible. Wow. It's a beautiful prayer, isn't it? I know by, I, I have no qualification, but I have this desire to become Krishna conscious. So, the moral of the story is, somehow or other, become greedy to become Krishna conscious. So beg, if you can get Krishna consciousness, by begging, get it. By borrowing, get it. By stealing, get it. Somehow or other, get it. That, that's the idea here. And that becomes the qualification. The main qualification, even on the stage we're at, whatever stage we're at, even on this stage. And when you get to higher stages, like Nishta, Ruchi, you can practice Raghunuga Bhakti because the greed will be more specific f towards a particular relationship and a particular resident of Vrindavan in that relationship. You don't have to worry about that. That will happen when it happens. Prabhupada will reveal what we need. Uh, it can be cultivated also through practice. That will, you know, Things happen naturally in Krishna consciousness as, as one advances. So it's not something you have to worry about. But because he was mentioning it here, I just wanted to explain it. At least not worry. Most of us will not have to worry about it now at this point. And when, if we do worry about it, it's generally because we're qualified and it's actually, the desire is actually there. So, nothing, nothing can be more important. And then you're thinking, well, isn't it that if I become purified, then as a result of the purification, the desire will be there? And the answer is, of course, yes. But that doesn't mean that before I'm very, very pure, I can't somehow or other cultivate this desire. And you're asking, well, how do I cultivate it? And I will throw that question back to you. That's for you to contemplate. You may first want to contemplate why I should be greedy, because when you get the why down, then the desire becomes natural. And so even, even on a lower stage of bhakti, if the why is strong, then the desire will be strong. And point of Rupa Goswami is that he is taking the part of an ordinary conditioned soul and saying that even as a conditioned soul, you can have a strong desire to be Krishna conscious. Even without any qualification, you can have a strong desire. Why would you have a strong desire? Because you do. That's why. I mean, that's the best answer. I don't want to philosophize this too much because... When we philosophize it too much, then we philosophize it into I'm not qualified and you know you need I need to take another birth and it's all not true. What it, what is your qualification and and do I have the right to desire it? Well, in another age, no, you wouldn't because you would need the qualification. And Mahaprabhu is is saying, okay, in this age you don't need the qualification. So you can you can rightfully desire pure love of god you can rightly be greedy for krishna consciousness even though it might seem artificial because you're not that advanced but if you just want it there's nothing more helpful for your devotional service so beg borrow or steal but get it why should i get it that's that's explained everywhere in Prabhupada's books why you should get it why it's important 
And as you practice Krishna consciousness, hopefully that why will become stronger and stronger, and therefore the desire for it will become stronger and stronger. Yes? So I'm going to see if you have any questions on that topic. Cambridge, yeah. Cambridge or Oxford. You know how... Um, You know how, hmm, I forgot what I was going to say. I was reading a comment. I forgot what I was going to say. Anyway, we'll continue reading. There's no questions. I guess there's no questions means that was a dull presentation or that presentation was so crystal clear. There are no questions. I'm not sure which one it is. Hopefully it's the latter, but or else everyone fell asleep. I bored them. I don't know what it was. Uh, so there's one more paragraph in this section. There's no restriction in serving Sri Krishna. Through the eyes of the gopis, through the eyes of the gopis, a devotee hears of the position of the deer, cows, birds, and gopas of Vrindavan and comes to recognize that bhakti is simply a matter of love. While hearing the sound of the flute, the gopis teach us how to appreciate the love of the Vajbasis and give us hope that one day we too may acquire such good fortune. So, the the Shema Bhagavatam is, as Prabhupada said, the summum bonum of Vedic literature. And the reason it's the summum bonum is because it sometimes it's, it's said the Bhagavatam is just a book of love because it's really, when you boil it down to, it's, it's really just demonstrating the love in the heart of the bhaktas for Krishna. Now, we can hear about Krishna, which we should, and we hear about the beauty of Krishna, and that helps awaken our love. But more, more so, more beneficial, is to hear about the love of the devotee and how that love manifests. That helps us even more. So the Bhagavatam is full of that because it's the book of love and love is the summum bonum of the Vedas and the Bhagavatam is illustrating it and then the tenth canto is the cream because it's illustrating the highest love. So as we hear about the residence of Braj and all the wonderful activities, we're actually seeing through our ears what love looks like because we don't really know what it looks like. We, we can't understand what love looks like from this world, not what perfect love looks like and what not love of God looks like because we don't have examples. And the sun is coming. Okay, hold on a second. I'm going to do something. <clears throat> that was removing my sun tea lock a little bit. Sunshine tea lock. Uh, so, you know the story Krishna sent Uddhava to Vrindavan with a message, but he also wanted, or maybe the main reason, he wanted Uddhava, I don't know, we can't say the main reason, but he wanted Uddhava to see the residence of Vrindavan. And because Krishna understood that by seeing the residence of Vrindavan, his love would increase more than being in his presence. It's interesting, right? And sometimes you may have experienced you have a problem in Krishna consciousness. Maybe a persistent problem. You just it's just kind of always there, like a kind of a sore that never heals. And then you associate with a devotee who doesn't have that problem, and your problem heals. Like that was the only way it can heal. At least it heals while you're in their so association. It may heal permanently. 
but you see something in that Vaishnava that you didn't have in your own heart, and by seeing that, you get affected and infected and purified. So we are getting purified by, by reading Bhagavatam because we're hearing about great devotees, and, and that, that shows us what love is. Because as I said, we don't really know what it is. We're not going to know from this world what it is. We're only going to know a reflection of it. And the goal is to develop love, so we need to hear about those who have love and how it manifests. And that helps us tremendously. That's one of the main processes. So, as we said, not, not only hearing, but when we go back to God, we get that association directly. But that's part of why we read Bhagavatam. Like some devotees, maybe they're not so attracted to reading that much, or they might find Bhagavatam sometimes philosophical, which it is because it has to establish some tattva because we can't understand Krishna's rasa or his relationships without some, some foundation of tattva who he is, what bhakti is, and so forth. So that has to be there. But when you boil it down, you'll see so much, so much is going on in the world of love. And so the purpose of life is love. And therefore, this is the book on love. It's the book on the highest love. So it's the summum bonum. And now, what about Chaitanya Charitamrita? Well, Bhakti Siddhanta said, well, if all the books, the world were flooded and you had to grab one book, you had to grab some books, Gita, Bhagavatam, CC, but you know, if you can only carry two, Bhagavatam, CC, if you can only carry one, CC. Because the CC is the Chaitanya Charitamrita is the Bhagavatam in action. It's personified through the life of Mahaprabhu and his devotees. So it's taking the summum bonum of the summum bonum. It's taking the highest love of the high of the book about love, and then it's manifesting that in action. In particularly in this last twelve years of separation, manifesting the the kind of love that was never seen before. No one no one on this planet Outside of the you know Krishna Lila, no one saw that kind of love. So he's manifesting what Radharani was manifesting. I said before that you hear about that love, you can go and read about it. You know, technically this is what it is, and this is when it happens. But Mahaprabhu actually came and showed it. No one saw it before. So Radharani's love is the highest, and Mahaprabhu is immersed in Radharani's love, specifically the last 12 years of his life, completely immersed in it, in the association of Ramananda Roy, Sarup Damodar, and others who are the main gopis who are guiding him. And Rupa Manjari is Rupa Manjari, and like, so it's, it's mind-boggling, actually, when you think about it. And probably the most mind-boggling thing is that we're actually here listening about it, isn't it? Like, we're listening to this. And like, who are we? What qualification do we have? And the answer is, we are nobody, and we have no qualification. And it's been given to us. And all we can say is, wow. And I think, you know, a lot of times we've discussed why a devotee would leave, and many devotees leave for various reasons. But when you enter into this world of appreciation on a very, very deep level, it's really hard to do anything other than be Krishna conscious because it's mind-boggling what we're given. This is like like Rupa Goswami said, Namo Mahabhananaya Krishna Prema Bhadayate. Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gora Chuisei Namaha. Why are you the most magnanimous? Because you're giving what was never given before. CC says, Chiradadatam Nijagupta Vitam. Chirad means a very long time. And for a very long time, this has never been given. What hasn't been given? Swaprema. 
love for himself, Namamritam, and nectar, this special holy name. And Chirad means a long time, but Prabhupada translates it as never before. Because it's like eight, last time he gave it was like eight billion years ago. So that's pretty much never before, not within our memory anyway. Something like eight billion, six hundred million years before. Um, he comes in a day of Brahma. A day is twelve hours times two. So he comes in every Kali Yuga as Mahaprabhu, but not this Mahaprabhu that's giving this love. So he comes as this Mahaprabhu to give this love. And all we can say is, wow, we're here right now. Like, that's amazing. Like, I'm even talking about this is amazing. That you're even listening is amazing. That Gaur Purnima is coming up this week, and we are going to hear all week about Mahaprabhu. I'm sure everyone's talking about it on all the classes. And we're hearing about these very, very high things for which we absolutely have no qualification because we're we're still attached to eating, sleeping, man, eating, def and defending to some degree. And if if we're in this consciousness then of appreciation, how can we ever leave? And that second verse of Shishastakam is just it's just it's the verse of appreciation. And it's it's you could say it's the verse of appreciation with a reality check. So the first three lines are appreciation. And the last line is reality check. I'm not attracted. I'm like, yeah, 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 I know it's nice, you know, love of God and Mahaprabhu never came before. Yeah, 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 yeah. But Nanuraga, I don't have any attachment. Like, wow. Like what is wrong with you? What is wrong with me? What is wrong with us? Mahaprabhu is taking the part of a conditioned soul, showing our unfortunate position. So that is the verse of appreciation. I call it the verse of appreciation, just complete appreciation. And in, in admitting that he has no attachment, there's even more appreciation because of saying, I've been given something. I don't, I'm not even attracted to it. And I've been given it. I'm not attracted because I'm so spiritually impure that I'm not attracted. And that's all the more reason to be, wow, I'm so fortunate. To feel the wow factor. To peg the wow, the wow meter over 10. That's how we should feel every day. Uh, we had a meeting this weekend uh, with senior devotees. And they were asked, well, what's your vision of ISKCON in the future? How will you, would you like to see it? And one devotee said, he said, you know, when I was a younger devotee, it was like so much fun. I like could hardly go to sleep at night because I'd be looking forward to Mongol Arti. So, yeah, that's that's how we should feel. Like, wow, this is amazing. I have, you know, oh, I have to chant my rounds. No, I'm so fortunate. This is amazing. I've been given the holy name. Come on. <clears throat> Don't be ungrateful. So this is what's required, you know. And so he was saying, when he was a young devotee, it's like every day was like amazing. He couldn't wait to get up. It was just like Krishna consciousness was just exciting and fun. That's that's what happens when you have a high level of appreciation. It's just like, wow, I'm so fortunate. Um, this morning I was reading about Mahaprabhu's meeting with Sarvabhoma. I was so ecstatic I fell asleep for a while. Well, I was actually tired. Um, but you know, when reading about this Leela and I'm reading other Leelas and like, what qualification do I have to hear this? Who is Sarvabhoma? I believe Sarvabhoma is Brihaspati. Who is Mahaprabhu? Radha and Krishna. And I'm privy to that conversation, all I can say is, wow. That's how we should feel. We're so fortunate. And when we feel that fortune, then we think, I want this, I want this, this nectar, this love, this relationship. It's, it's everything. It's better than anything. 
This is what I want. And this is all I want. And that's, that's, we could say how Prabhupada wanted us to digest Krishna consciousness, a, a, a wow experience, an appreciative experience. And that's how Prabhupada was feeling when he was writing his books, giving us these leelas, thinking they're going to be drowning in an ocean of nectar. I'm giving them so much nectar, just drown their material desires away. Well, this is what he was thinking, and this is how we should be feeling, ideally. And if we're not feeling that way, then we're not either appreciating or, or, or emerging ourselves deeply enough or we're too focused on our own needs and desires and or our false ego gets in the way and we can't can't really digest this nectar but as far as possible at least at least I think this is this week is a, a perfect week for appreciating this is, this is the perfect week for the wow factor. We'll start a TV show called The Wow Factor. You know? And wow simply means appreciation. And this is, the more we appreciate Krishna consciousness, the better. Okay. That was my monologue. My monologue is over. We have... Uh, Okay, we have some comments here. Chidananda said it was not boring. Good. I wasn't bored, I don't know. I'm just kind of very relaxed right now. That's probably because I nodded out. <laughs> so love the presentation, Marge. I really like your lectures with Krishna Kata when it's without translation to another <laughs> language. Yeah. <laughs> Translating to another language is one of the great austerities. Um, well, I think we're going to get a, we may get a Zoom account. It's a little costly. Uh, the Zoom it kind of monopolized us. A Zoom account where you can translate simultaneously so we don't have to stop. But it's hard on the translator. Hmm. Okay. Well, you want to burglarize my house to steal prema? Hmm. Well, let me get the prema first so you can steal it. Okay, Laura says, if we have the desire to play with Krishna as a gopa in the spiritual world, but also desire to serve the gopis in their pastimes with Krishna as a manjari, are we able to serve in both ways, change our services and form in Goloka? <clears throat> I heard Ayendra Prabhu say that we can simultaneously have one form in Krishna Lila and one in Gauralila. That's true. Bhaktivinoda Thakur said that. It is difficult for me to fathom the way it all works with my limited intelligence. Can you please enlighten me? So um, we have been we have been reading about Yoga Maya for who knows how long, two months or three months or something. Maybe more, I forgot. But quite a while, at least a few months. And one thing that became obvious <clears throat> was that Yoga Maya was doing anything that was necessary for the Leela, like whatever. It didn't matter. We read, I think, Friday, wasn't it, that these cows were running down the side of a mountain and they were about to slip. Krishna was there and they're running down and they're about to slip off the mountain. And Yoga Maya interfered with the law of gravity so they wouldn't fall down. And and I had been saying previously that we're seeing that Yoga Maya can make any arrangement that's necessary for Krishna Lila. And then this was kind of like the icing on the cake. Okay, it's time to fool around with physics. So, you know, we're gonna like we need to alter gravity here so the cows don't fall. So that was the icing on the cake of Yoga Maya can do anything. Now Yoga Maya is a servant of Krishna, so if Yoga Maya can do anything, obviously Krishna can do anything, and Krishna's devotees. On the level of Yoga Maya, as needed, as needed by Krishna, can do anything. So, um, this is the answer to your second question: how 
how can we be in two places at once? Uh, sometimes we find that devotees expand. Or how is it that devotees are coming down to engage in Krishna Leela? Aren't they in the spiritual world simultaneously? Yeah. And so what what we have to, like where we begin this answer is to understand that the laws of nature are not functioning in the spiritual world. And so we're we're looking at every, everything according to physics and chemistry. So I was like, well, that wouldn't work here. Well, that's not here. That's why it wouldn't work here. You're right, it wouldn't work here, but that's not here. So we have to give up the limitations we put on things here due to natural laws that don't exist there. We also understand that Krishna can fulfill a devotee's desire in any way that the devotee wants to be fulfilled. So um, I think a lot of us, a lot of devotees, they're very attached to Gaur Leela and they're very attached to Krishna Leela. So if Krishna said, well, choose one or the other, that would be a tough choice. If Krishna says you can have both, well, that's what we call a no-brainer. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur was the first to introduce this idea. And it, I don't think he meant that it just started happening when he introduced the idea, like he talked to Mahaprabhu, and Mahaprabhu said, okay. But he's saying that to fulfill the desire of a devotee, a devotee can have, can participate in both leelas. That's nice. Well, how? If you try to figure out how, how are you going to figure it out? It's not going to make sense because we're figuring it out from this this side of the universe where that doesn't where people like don't appear you know like here I am and I'm giving class but I'm also in Australia you know talking to you now, how is that going to happen I don't think it's going to happen right or wherever you are oh yeah it's the Laura from Australia so I'm in Adelaide right now, Laura, in your house talking to you, and we're looking at the live talk of me talking. And you're like, Twilight Zone. There was a TV show called Twilight Zone. You must be in the Twilight Zone now. That doesn't happen. In the spiritual world, it happens. So that's the answer to the first question, the second question. The first question is, it's an interesting question. It's a kind of an elevated question. But the first question is that your desire now, whether it's to be a gopi or a cowherd girl, it's it's not a result of of a revelation yet that this is like Krishna has revealed this is my relationship. So whether you're a gopa or a gopi, that you will understand at some point. So there won't be any confusion there. And if you're a gopi, you won't want to be a gopa. And if you're a gopa, you won't want to be a gopi. It will be perfect for you. And so the gopas don't think, darn, how'd I end up as a gopa? Bummer. I wanted to be a gopi. Well, if they were actually gopis, they wouldn't be gopas. It just doesn't work that way. It's like you don't get to the spiritual world like... Oh, they put me in this room. Uh, I've got to stay with this person. I don't like this. The room's too small for both of us, and they snore. No, it's not like that. But there are different classifications of gopas, and some are like younger, more in the servant mood to Krishna, although they're friends, but they're more in the servant mood. And some are just friend friends, you know, like equals. And some are closer to the position of the gopis in that they send messages to the gopis. So they're they're kind of like that. Not gopis, they're not in that rasa, but they're exchanging, they're helping Krishna in his rasa with the gopis. So they're the most intimate coward boys. So you could have that position. How's that sound? That sound good, Laura? Laura's like, yeah, yeah. That sounds good. I'll take that. Okay. Well, 
you will take what you will get according to your rasa. But if that sounds good for now, then yeah, then you're good to go. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Okay, that's the answer for that. It was so ecstatic I fell asleep. I will use that in the next Bhagavatam lecture when I nod off. Yeah. Um, that's an advanced... You have to understand, Sanatini, that's, that's a very advanced platform when you fall asleep while you read Bhagavatam. It's because you faint. As you, because the wow factor, it goes off the meter. It goes to 11 and then you faint. That's amazing. But... You know, it's nice to read before you go to sleep so you can dream about what you're reading. So that's that's sometimes um, why we suggest reading before you go to sleep because then you'll dream about what you're reading. I mean, reading about Krishna, yeah. So we have a question from Krishna Karshani. So those who are born in the previous ages did not have chance what we have access. Exactly. If yes... It's a bit unfair. Living entities from previous ages were much more qualified. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Krishna Karshani, when you are finally liberated, and you meet Krishna, you can go up to Krishna and go, "It's not fair. How come I got to go back in Gaur Lila and become a gopi, and the other ones didn't?" <laughs> right. Maybe you could do a drama. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you brought this point up because. This point magnifies the mercy of Mahaprabhu. It's true. It's not fair. And so then the question is, why did Mahaprabhu do it? And the answer is because he can. And there are other answers also, such as it didn't Bhagavad Gita really didn't work. Like nobody was like really taking it up. So then Mahaprabhu realized, or Krishna realized. We're gonna need. We need a new strategy. Like this is like people aren't taking this. You know, it's kind of like, okay, come into the restaurant, and you know the big sign out in front of it. Come on in, and like hardly anyone's coming in. Okay, well, we need another strategy. Well, samples. Let's give out samples. I was just reading this morning and said, Nitananda was giving out samples. Say Goranga, hear about Goranga. Bolo Gorbajik, worship Goranga, not Krishna. Goranga is easy, no qualification. Here, just take, you know, you know, sample. You don't have to do anything. So that's what he did. And he said, like, if we're going to, you know, in the story of Jagai and Madai, when Mahaprabhu wanted to kill them, and Nityananda Prabhu said, you know, come on. If you're going to kill them, then, you know, we're going to have to kill everybody because everybody's like them. And you didn't come in this incarnation to kill. You came in this incarnation to give mercy. And Mahaprabhu was, yeah, you're right. Okay. So if they apologize, if you apologize to Nityananda Prabhu, you never commit sin, we will accept you. So there are examples, right? So Mahaprabhu has come to give mercy. And what makes the wow experience wow is that we don't deserve it. And the others who did deserve it didn't get it. That's kind of wow worthy. We call it jai worthy. You can you can say it's wow worthy or you can say it's jai worthy. So and you know <laughs> Krishna Karshani, if someone gave you a million dollars, you probably wouldn't say, you know, it's not really fair, you know, because like I'm not rich, but I have enough money. So why are you giving it to me? You probably go, Thanks. And grab it, right? So it isn't fair, but Mahaprabhu knows that it's the only way we'll become Krishna conscious, the only way we'll get out of this world is if he just gives it to us, even though we're unqualified. And so that was his decision. And then the next question is, well, why did he choose to give us this kind of love, the love that is so intense, that previously was never given? And the answer is, because he wanted to. And the second answer is, because he can. Because he has that love to give, so he can do it. And he just decided, okay, we're going to do it. And that's it. I mean, 
the position of a devotee is that, well, whatever Krishna decides is perfect. So a devotee never questions Krishna's decision. And so like, okay, Krishna, you want to give me love? Okay, you know, all right, I'll take it. Bring it on, you know, like that. And um, there, there are deep reasons, esoteric reasons in this. Um, another wow factor is that we're all, we're all pioneers in the, this movement of Mahaprabhu that's going around the world. So that's like, that's like triple wow or 108 wows that we can, we can participate. And Prabhupada said, you can get credit. So, okay, I've been given this mercy. I don't deserve it. It's not even fair. We're not even qualified. And on top of that, I've been asked to give that mercy to other people who aren't qualified. And on top of that, if I do that, I become dear to Krishna. And, you know, just for telling people about Krishna, I become dear to Krishna. That's like a deal. So, come on down. Take advantage. That's all I can say. Uh, Nadia says, since we're talking about love, I have a question. The more I practice Krishna consciousness, read and associate with devotees, the more I realize that actually I don't love anyone in my life. That's so painful to realize that there's no love in my heart. Oh, you realize that also. Hmm. Um, I realize that every moment. That's so painful to realize there's no love in my heart to anyone, what to speak about having the love of God. And it's very discouraging when I see the devotees doing something out of selfless love, how they give themselves to serving others. This level seems to me absolutely unachievable. I look at them and think, what am I doing here among these devotees who are so dedicated and full of unalloyed love? I feel very uncomfortable and sometimes discouraged. How can I overcome these feelings to be able to continue practicing because <clears throat> because you have no alternative. You're definitely not going to get love if you give up Krishna consciousness, right? It'll just get worse. The heart will get harder. And the only way the heart's going to soften is by practicing Krishna consciousness and by associating with those devotees. Your heart will soften. And so there's no alternative. We the thing is that when you become Krishna conscious, you just become more aware of how Krishna conscious you're not, which you weren't aware of before you were a devotee because you weren't trying to be Krishna conscious. So how could you be aware that you're not Krishna conscious? And now you're trying to become Krishna conscious and you have the realization, oh, I never realized how much love I don't have. I never realized how selfish I was. And so... It's not like anything has changed, it's just the light's being shown, which is, in a sense, a sign of advancement that at least now we see it. And so now that you can see it, um, let, let that fact that you don't have love be an impetus. That when you chant your rounds and just pray, Krishna, give me a drop of love, I don't have any, and you can just hanker for it. So when, when you feel a lack of something, it can be an impetus, right? Just like, uh, a lot of wealthy people grew up poor. And because they had no money, they told themselves, I'm never going to live like this. This is horrible. You know, there was, I think Tony Robbins was like, sometimes they didn't even have like a meal. You know, their father was just, I don't know what his father was, but so, you know, he's, he's like, I'm not going to live like that. I can't even, you know, provide for my children. And they have to worry day to day how we're going to live. So, you know, I don't have love. I don't want to live that way. I want love. So let that be an impetus rather than discourage you. Um, I've been sitting a lot. And so this week I just started being more active and got my bike out and tortured myself riding up hills, and doing all kinds of stuff to get my body moving more. And the impetus was that all that sitting too much was just making me tired. I was tired all the time. I couldn't figure out why am I so tired. And I just had a 
I had to move my body more. It wasn't moving enough. I mean, I would walk every day, but I didn't think it was compensating all the sitting. I needed more. So I'm happy to report I have more energy. I can outrun you in a race, in a bike race. This old man can outrun you. And um, so the, the not feeling energetic was the impetus to do it. So let the negative be the impetus for the positive. I have no love. That's why I want it, because I don't have it. I'm not like, I have no love, so I should just give up and have even less love. No, I have no love, and I'll give up, so there's no possibility I'll have love. It doesn't make sense, right? I'm so tired, what's the use of exercising? I'll just go to sleep, eat potato chips and go to sleep. You know, that, that's a, is that a good solution? No. Get out there, move your body. Get it. You see, can you tell? Look at me. Like, um, I once heard uh, someone say, the body's the only machine that gets better by using it. <laughs> okay. Mago Zata. K. Karshani is going to say something controversial. What I will say may sound controversial. Da -da 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 -da. Everybody, fasten your seatbelts. But maybe this statement that only fallen souls of Kali Yuga have access to such elevated rasas is a little lie to make the stupid fallen souls of Kali Yuga more eager to get it. Well, uh, if you have a shast shastric pramanam to support that, I don't have one that would support it. Uh, I only have the opposite to support it. Um, the idea is that, um, you know, we have to, you have to kind of see it from Krishna's point of view. Prabhupada said, Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita and said, surrender. Sharvadharmam purtya jamame kam sharanam braja aham tam sharvapape vyomaki shami mashu chaha and nobody did it. No one surrendered. Okay, we have a problem. We opened the shop and no one is coming in because they don't want to pay the price. All right, well, let's give free samples. So Mahaprabhu said, okay. Okay, we're going to do it. You know, I can't stand to see the fallen souls suffering. So you have to look at it from Mahaprabhu's point of view of compassion. I once asked Srila Prabhupada's godbrother, I somehow or other... I ended up in front of him, and I could ask this question. I said, why did Mahaprabhu give prema in the mood of the residents of Braja? Why? Well, like, why? It doesn't make sense. Kind of like what Krishna Karshan is saying. And he said, if a man is wealthy and he's giving in charity, how much is he going to give? He's going to give a lot because he has a lot. So he said, Ma Prabhu is giving charity. He has prema. That's why he gives it. What's he going to give? That's, you know, he's going to give two cents and he has $10 billion or $150 billion, like some of uh, the richest people in the world. What's he going to give? He's going to give billions because he has it. That was his answer. And the other answer also, which I think is really important, and, and I think especially helpful for you, Krishna Karshani, he's going to do this because he wants to. And so what Krishna wants to do, we can't argue with him. Like, why does he want to do that? That's not right. You know, according to me, you know, if I were him, I wouldn't do that. You know, we can't think that way. We are simply servants of his will. If Krishna says, I want to give prema, we're like, yes, how can we help you? Not like, well, I don't think that's a good idea because it's not fair because in the last age, you know, they didn't get in. You're going to give it to these people. They're not even qualified. You know, we got to talk about this, you know, like like we need a meeting. No, that's not the way a devotee thinks. The devotee thinks, okay, we're in. You know, whatever you want to do, we're there to help you. That's the idea. Hmm. So we have a question. Our spiritual original form is dynamic. Or permanent. Yeah, it's permanent. Although Prabhupada said, you could change because the spiritual nature is dynamic, but 
Now, I, the answer, my answer to this question is, don't worry. You'll end up in the right place. You'll end up, you won't end up, dis, you join Krishna consciousness, you won't be disappointed. Don't worry. Your general understanding is that relationship is fixed and it will manifest. But, Prabhupada said, it's dynamic. The nature of the spiritual world is dynamic. The possibility is always there that it could change. One time Prabhupada talked about going from Vaikuntha to Goloka. So because it's a spiritual world, anything's possible. But the main thing to understand is you're not going to be disappointed. Like I said, oh. Krishna Karshini is now pleading guilty, my speculation. And then another point. The purification process of bhakti makes us realize how impure we are when we are advanced, even more so. You'll feel more impure when you're advanced. Sorry for the bad news, everyone. You feel bad now? Just wait till you become Krishna conscious. You're going to feel really bad. Except that bad's going to be turned into ecstasy at simultaneously. Now the bad just kind of turns into depression. Yeah, I mean, look at the prayers of the Vaishnava Acharyas. Look at Bhaktivinoda Thakur's prayers. It's like total lamentation of how fallen I am. It's just when you become more advanced, you become, a more, you become more aware of how fallen you are. But it has the effect that I was describing. It has the effect of increasing your greed to be Krishna conscious. So it doesn't have a depressing effect. It has a very stimulating effect. I'm so fallen. What does that mean? I need Krishna terribly because I'm so fallen. Instead, of, I'm so fallen. What's the use? I'm such a wretch. I never did anything good. If I have any luck, it's just bad luck. Then blah, 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 blah. And then you end up in the trash can. But... The pure devotee thinks, I'm so fallen, Krishna, I need you so much because I'm so fallen. I'm so far from you. I need you so much. I'm feeling so much separation. It's all impetus. Nothing in pure devotional service is anything but impetus for more pure devotional service, even if it's viewing my fall. I am so fallen, how much more do I need you? It's kind of like, let's say, Let's say Anuradha said, like, the handsomest man in the world fell in love with you, and you're thinking, but I don't deserve this. I'm not, you know, like Miss Mexico or anything. And um, I don't deserve it, but, you know, how would you feel? You feel like, wow, he's a man. And not only is he handsome, he's rich. And not only is he rich, he's nice. Not only is he nice, he's smart. Not only is he nice, he's kind. He's like, well, I don't deserve this, but you know, you're not going to leave him because you don't deserve it, right? You're going to just say, wow, I don't deserve it. I'm, you know, he deserves better, but he wants me, so okay, let's do it. So you know, Mahaprabhu deserves better, but he wants us, so whatever, we'll go for it. Why not? Okay. Can we start to read prayers of Bhaktivinoda Thakur? Yeah, we can. So I think um, this week we'll do... I want to finish reading because there's just a little bit. Because I... No, there's not so little bit. All right, well, maybe we'll... This was advertised as the last class on Yoga Maya, so I have to finish reading. Okay, We'll go just a little longer. Mahaprabhu's mercy. And this is um, this is an example of Yoga Maya. Laura, this is a good example of Yoga Maya doing anything. Then there are the swans which inhabit the beautiful waters of Vrindavan, feeding off the stems of lotus flowers and emitting a very melodious warbling sound. Their graceful movements excel that of any other waterfowl. And when diving in the water, they enjoy playing among the lotus stems that resemble their slender necks. The swans of Raja are generally white, although some black swans have been arranged by Yogamaya for the pleasure of Krishna. Now, so Laura, Yogamaya has made white swans black. How do you do that? Well, next time you see Yogamaya, you can ask her. Well, how do you do that? 
you just be, you know, if you're yoga maya and you have to do what you have to do, Krishna empowers you to do it. And, you know, we learn about Lord Brahma. It's just like thinks or the pure devotee, whatever they think happens. So it's just like you think it and it happens, which would be dangerous for us. Whatever we think happens, we'd probably all be in jail or dead by now. But if you're yoga maya, your mind is only for the pleasure of Krishna. So it's just like, hey, black swans, one order of black swans, there they are. In addition, there are Rajahangsa swans that are very special due to larger size and unique ability to separate milk from water. You know that story about the devotees sitting under a desire tree? Whatever you, when you sit under that desire tree, whatever you, you think happens. And he's thinking, what if this would happen and it happened? What if that's and he says, but what if, a, what if there's a tiger out here in the forest and they come and eat me? And then that's what happened. That's why if everything we thought happened, I said we'd either be in jail or dead. Yeah. Or maybe die in jail. Or it wouldn't be good until you're a pure devotee. And that's fortunately why Krishna doesn't give those who aren't pure devotees that potency. Okay, here here's another thought. Assisted by divine providence, the gopis headed by Sri Radhika left the confines of their homes and considering the obstacles of their superiors, no more than mustard seeds entered the forest like a liquid stream of sweetness. If one were to ask, what will happen if the gopis' superiors find their daughters absent from home? What will happen if they angrily enter the dark night in search of them? The answer is that yoga maya, Krishna's mystic illusion, is empowered for this task, and she will make an arrangement to enrich the leela. So the gopis they have nothing to worry about. They, Yoga Maya goes, just leave. But what about my family? What about my husband? What about my mother-in-law? She goes, they, they won't say it like that. <clears throat> if they were an American man, they would say it like that. And Yoga Maya says, just go. I got you covered. Don't worry. Yoga Maya is amazing, right? Okay, so we just have a few things to read. Krishna says, O Arjuna, as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, I know everything that has happened in the past, all that is happening in the present, and all things that are yet to come. I also know all living entities, but me, no one knows. So, a little philosophy here. Srila Baladev Vidyabhushan poses a question. If a living entity can be covered by maya and fall into ignorance, can this also happen to Krishna? No, he answers. Maya is inferior to Krishna and is controlled by Krishna's prowess. She carries out his orders from afar and cannot affect him. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur explains Krishna's words. Maya has no power to bewilder her own shelter. Therefore, neither the external Maya nor the internal Yoga Maya can ever cover my awareness. And no one knows me completely, no materialistic or transcendental person, such as Maharudra or anyone else, even the most omniscient person. That is because either maya or yoga maya, as is appropriate in each individual case, is always covering everyone's awareness. Mamtu Vedana Kashtana signifies that one who truly knows Krishna is very rare. So, as we discussed before, everyone is bewildered either by yoga maya, maha maya, and maya, either maya or yoga maya cannot cover Krishna except when Krishna wants her to. And she knows when he wants to forget that he's Krishna. So she covers him. At least tempor not permanently, temporarily. Okay. Do we have one last question? Regarding the wow factor. Since I first met you, my life has turned into one single word. Incredible. Thank you. Hare Krishna. So we should all we should all be wow factors for other people. People should meet us and they should just go, Wow, you're amazing. Hare Krishna. Okay, so we'll end here. We went over time. And um tomorrow, of course, there's no class. I have my meeting. We we will uh, well tomorrow night we have class seven and translate into Spanish. Uh those classes are quite nice. We talk we end up talking about things that I a lot of things that I don't talk about in other classes. If you're interested, you're certainly welcome. You don't have to be a Spanish speaker because I'm speaking in English. If you want to learn Spanish, it's a good, quite a good way to learn. Especially if you already know a little Spanish, it's a great way to learn. But we will, um, 
Now I'll talk about Mahaprabhu's leelas starting on Wednesday. And just, not just leela, but the philosophy. And we fortunately we could discuss it today. It worked out. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. We will see you soon. Maybe for Japa. Coming up in in only 40 minutes. No, no, no. Coming up in 20 minutes. I will be there in an hour and 20 minutes.